So hi Roy, um, it's great to have you here to um, go through some of our questions following our recent event, um, which was Church Disability as a New Normal, how can we ensure the gospel reaches everyone? And um, Roy, would you like to introduce yourself and then I'll start with the first question. <laughs> Okay, Roy McCluffrey. Uh, I'm the Disability Advisor for the Church of England uh, and lived with uh, epilepsy all my life. So I've got personal experience of disability and my daughter uh, had as well. And also have written on disability uh, as well. So it's a world I'm familiar with and I work with a lot of disabled people. So uh, uh, that's my background with respect to, to disability, yeah. Brilliant, thank you. So we've asked uh, some people who came to the events if they'd like to ask any uh, questions. Um, and the first one is, you mentioned in your talk the idea of asking everyone the question, what do you need to enable you to fully join in with worship today? So what happens when some individuals have answers that conflict with other people's answers? How can the church accommodate different individuals who have opposite needs? Um, say for example, somebody who came to the event said they would like a quiet space in the service. Silence helps them, but others don't like that, so it's tricky. Well, uh, I think the, the first thing to say uh, is that um, uh, I said that we need to ask everybody uh, what do you need in, in order to enable you to be, uh, w enable you to worship in our church or enable you to belong uh, in our church. So it's not a question you just ask of disabled people. It's a question you ask of everybody um, because the gospel is good news for everybody and the church is there for everybody uh, and uh, so everybody will have uh, different things to say to to that question and I think one of the things is not to make assumptions that you know what people need uh, and so the reason you ask the question is because you want the person to personally be able to say to you this is what I need rather than you saying, oh, you know, you're in a wheelchair, uh, therefore you need X, Y, and Z. They may not. Uh, the second thing is that relationship is important. Uh, if you have got a relationship with someone, then that enables you to know more about what they need, uh, enables trust to be built up, and it enables friendship to be built up. And all those things contribute to enabling people to feel that they belong in the community of the church. But uh, I have tried to organize conferences where people have got conflicting needs, um, even to the kind of sandwiches they want at lunchtime or, or to the kind of lighting they need in the room. And it is really, really difficult. So uh, I'm not going to say that uh, one size fits all, that's what the question is about, nor am I going to give you an answer as to how to do it in some miraculous way. I'm going to say that if you do have competing needs, whether it's between the needs of disabled people or any person, it's hard work you are going to have to work really hard to get it right. So if you need someone who needs bright light on one side and someone who doesn't like bright light on the other side, you could end up tearing your hair out if you haven't got the right kind of lighting. So, so we need to be patient with one another and we need to trust each other that our intentions are loving we want to enable each other to be belong to our church, but sometimes we it takes some time to allow that to happen. Um, we want, for instance, people to access the building. Some of our buildings are not very accessible. We need to find ways around that. 
we need people, we want people to be able to offer their gifts to the church. Sometimes that takes a bit of time before we can recognize their gifts. So we need, as I say, to be patient, to trust each other, to build up relationships with each other, not to assume things about each other. And then we can grow in friendship and community and come to some kind of practical arrangement about how we go forward together. So you proposed that the real question might be not what does it mean to be church, but what does it mean to be community? How does our thinking need to change to be less focused on a Sunday? Well, I, I think that um, the church is a community uh, and that is not just the global church, but the local church. At the moment, if the, our church is open, it feels quite, you know, it's quite different to sit there, you know, two meters apart with masks on. It doesn't feel like a community. Um, and I think where we are most uh, uh, like a community is where we serve one another. Um, so I, I mentioned Matthew 25 about serving each other and that that was one of the hallmarks of the gospel and I, I think that that's how the sense of being community comes about so not sitting in sitting in serried ranks in in a, in a church which is important to go to church and be together and to worship together but out of the service out of the four walls of the building to look for ways to serve one another where whether it's in the context of disability or homelessness or listening to bereaved people or whatever it is to form those issues to form those responses uh, that ar arise out of being the gospel not just talking the gospel um, and i think that's how we become community you suggested that Doing things better isn't about meetings, but about how we can fulfill the vision of Matthew 25. If we are all individually fulfilling this vision in a socially distanced kind of way, what could help us to maintain our sense of community? Yeah, it's a really difficult one, isn't it? I mean, we are all struggling, I think, with social distancing. We can't hug each other. You know, uh, it, it's, it is, these are extraordinary times, very, very difficult times. But the, the fact that we are aware that people who are fragile are, isol are isolating has brought out a sense of community, I think, that people are serving others, they're looking out for others, they're phoning up and seeing if they're okay, they're shopping for them, all those kind of, of things. Um, but there is no doubt, I think, at the moment, that we are grieving the loss of community, uh, the loss of friendship, the loss of being in mixed families and seeing sometimes not able to see grandchildren. All kinds of things are more fragile in terms of relationship than they have been. So, I mean, yes, I take the question. Yes, I. I want us to serve each other in terms of Matthew 25. I think it's the heart of the gospel. But I realize at the moment we are, we are living through dark times. And I think the church is really key in offering hope, uh, in enabling people to uh, help one another, uh, to keep the light of community alive as, as something which is absolutely the heart of the gospel. Uh, but let's not, uh, let's not, yeah, let's not be romantic about the days we're living through, I think. They're difficult. Um, and how can we generate greater interest about disabled people's needs among church leadership? <laughs> I'm not sure I can answer this, really. I mean, I can't speak for church leadership. I think I, I, I'm, I feel that 
you know, when church leaders are interested in need full stop, whether it's disabled people's needs or any kind of need, then I feel that we are closer to the gospel. Um, it's all too easy for church leaders to feel insecure if the numbers of people attending their church are not what they would like them to be. There's a tendency for success in terms of being a church leader to be kind of rated by the number of people who go to a church. But the gospel is very, very different. I think it looks at the people who are at the heart of the church uh, and says, you know, what is the church about? What is the church's message? And I think Paul in 1 Corinthians was very adamant that those who are most excluded should be at the heart of the church. Mm. So um, the church leadership often has to turn on its head the message that they are representing. Um, I remember an American guy talking about his church and he had a satellite picture of, of the church. And so he had the neighborhood around the church. And if uh, he had uh, a kind of maybe a, a register of the disabled people in the community, and if they, uh, and there was a red dot on, on the roof of their house, if they went to the church, there was a red dot on the roof of the church. So there are a lot of people in houses around the church who are disabled, but there are no red dots on the church. None of those people went to the church. And so the, my question is, well, what kind of message does that church exemplify? And does that, those people, do those people feel that the church leadership is about meeting need? And I think we need to be very, very careful that we don't have a notion of success which bypasses needs, whether it's the needs of disabled people or any other people. Yeah, that's such a powerful um, picture. Yeah, mm. yeah. And how do we discover people in our community who have a disability that might be interested in being part of a church? So I suppose this is, could be an evangelistic question as well. I'm not sure it's difficult to find people in a community who have a disability or any other kind of uh, reason why they may be excluded from the community. Um, and because of that, the church is interested in bringing them in to the Christian community. I, I'm not sure that it's that difficult to find them in the community. I think the difficult thing is to persuade them that the Christian gospel is something that they should be interested in. Um, and quite often disabled people say to me that they used to go to church, but they felt that they were kind of fodder for healing and they left, you know, when they weren't healed or they went to church and people were embarrassed about them and never talked to them. Or there are all kinds of reasons sometimes why dis disabled people had been to a church but had not felt that it was as welcoming as as it could have been and so i think churches need to examine themselves to ask what is it that we are conveying by being ourselves that there's an old teacher's proverb which says it's not what you say that matters it's what they hear and I think we can believe that what we're saying is the gospel, but what people hear is something completely different. So I don't think it's difficult to find the people in the community who, who are people who are excluded. I mean, you just go to one care home and you'd find loads of people there who would love to be visited and befriended and given a lift to church and what have you. Quite often, um, they may not want to, of course, but may, may, maybe we're, we're not seeing them as a priority. So um, again, we need to look at our priorities. We need to look at our message again. 
and we need to make sure that it's good news for everybody, including all those people who are excluded from society so often. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, how well would you say the church is meeting them, or is reaching, sorry, those with learning disabilities or profound disabilities who find online church too complex or don't have the internet? I, I think this question is, is way outside my comfort zone um, because I'm not a person who works with people with learning disabilities. Um, I, I think it is very, very difficult to convey in any kind of way uh, the gospel uh, in the way that we preach it in churches and you know, to people who see the world in a different way. Um, so again, we have to uh, take stock of what goes on in church and say we must look at creative ways to convey what we're, we're saying uh, in a way that helps them. It, it's not, people with learning disabilities, you know, it's not that the way they see the world as... Uh, you know, it, it's not a deficiency, it's just different. Mm -hmm. So we, we need to be aware of the fact that a lot of our, actually, I'm a preacher, a lot of my preaching is just missing people. I stand there and I preach and I think, you know, you can see people glazing over, they nearly fall off their seats sometimes because it's not reaching them. Hopefully sometime it does. So it's not just people with learning disabilities, I think. We need to be constantly aware in an age which is so focused on communication by super social media and visual means, we need to be aware that sometimes when we look at the needs of people like, who've got learning disabilities, they are calling us to a better way of presenting the gospel than we currently do. And so often when we um, meet the needs of people who currently think differently from ourselves, we find ourselves fulfilling the gospel in a much better way. But I'm not going to pretend that, that I can speak, you know, coherently to the, uh, in terms of an answer to that question. It's not really something I know much about. Thank you. And, and just to finish off with the last question, uh, how is the church responding to those with hidden disabilities rather than just the obvious disabilities? Well, I mean, if they're hidden, then you can't respond to them in the same way. So I've lived with epilepsy all my life. And um, I've been free of seizures for many years because of medication. But uh, if you actually kind of looked at me and, you know, here am I, disability advisor to the Church of England, you could say, well, you know, what right has this guy got to be a disability advisor? I mean, I'm deaf and all that stuff. I've got all that as well. But my experience of disability is quite profound over my life. So it's hidden to other people. Um, so there is a sense in which we have to be fair to each other. If someone's got a hidden disability, um, we have to respect their privacy if they don't want to declare it. Um, but also the question that we talked about right at the beginning, what is it that you need to enable you to fully participate in, in worship and in this church community. Because it's a question we ask of everybody, not just people who are visibly disabled. Um, it gives them the opportunity to say, well, this is my situation. Um, what is it that you need, I think. And if they say nothing, that is their, that's for, 
them to do that. That's the privacy that, that we should respect from uh, with. Um, but it's quite uh, true that we need to think through uh, what we would do if people came to our church who uh, had certain uh, impairments, um, people who live with autism or various other um, impairments that they live with. We need to think that through. If they come through the door, how do we respond to them? So um, we need to be preemptive in that sense to, to prepare ourselves as a congregation. But of course, you know, all kinds of other things get in the way and we forget about it and what have you. But um, yeah, to, to, to respect their privacy, to ask them what they need and have thought about what our response would be uh, if they came and joined us as a, as a church community. Well, thank you very much for kindly um, answering these questions that people have submitted from the event. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.